All right, guys, this is my first YouTube video, so bear with me. Uh, this is my uh, 10 by 12 Harbor Freight greenhouse that I purchased for $500 as a coupon, and my IBC tote aquaponics system that I've just finished building. Uh, there's several videos on YouTube of aquaponic systems that I referred to, and uh, they were great, so I figured I'd add my my two cents. Anyway, I guess I'll uh, go over some of the modifications that I made to the Harbor Freight greenhouse first uh, to uh, make it a lot better. Uh, first thing I did was I built it on 2x6 pressure treated lumber rather than the metal uh, foundation that came with it. And I attached those to 4x4s that I buried in the ground in uh, two foot of concrete. Um, then I was able to attach those 4x4s to the frame of the greenhouse to, get it, to give it more rigidity. Uh, the other thing that I did to it was the front and back wall were very flexible with the wind pressure. So I used uh, electrical conduit and I put it at 45 degree angles from the middle of the front wall and the middle of the back wall to the side walls. Um, and that seemed to help significantly. The other thing that I did was the panels had a tendency to pop out really easily. And so I added uh, roofing screws to the center of the panels to, uh, to keep them in place. And that's, that's worked really well. The other thing that I did to the greenhouse was uh, climate control. That was a big deal. And so uh, I've installed a, um, a shade cloth over the top of it. And then also I've installed a, an exhaust fan that I purchased from Lowe's. It's an, it's an attic fan actually. And by the end of the week, I'll have installed a fogger system that I ordered from Walmart. It's the Orbit uh, PVC fog system. It's got five heads. I'll install that this weekend. Um, so yeah, let me take you around and show you what I did to the actual greenhouse, and then we'll come back and talk about the actual aquaponic system. So I'll take you around and show you the exhaust first. So from the outside, you can see the exhaust vent that I put in place and that I just secured with aluminum tape. I also used that aluminum tape to cover the top and bottom of each panel to uh, stop moisture from getting into the inside of the panels. They're corrugated plastic and uh, and I've heard that people have problems with algae growing. So right here I'll go ahead and show you the uh, the screws that I use to hold the panels in place. I put four of them on the sides. And I'll take you inside. And here's the exhaust fan. And I actually used the metal foundation, a couple pieces from it to secure it in place. Uh, and then the, uh, this is the metal conduit that I put in place. And then I also placed it in the front. Okay. The other thing I did was I ran electricity. So I ran this uh, this outlet here so I can power the uh, light I've got here. And also ran it around to this 4x4 and over around to this 4x4 to uh, power the pond pump and the aerator. Okay. And then I also brought water in. And I just used a uh, coiled uh, water hose and spigot. Alright. 
So that's what I did as far as the modifications to the actual greenhouse itself. And I backfilled it with dirt and gravel and paving stones. Okay. So now let me back out and I'll review the aquaponics system with you. Okay, we'll start outside. So I used a full IBC tote on either side that feeds three grow beds. Okay, and then I also built a swirl filter using a, a uh, water bottle. Okay, let me open this up. I made a top for it. It's going to get a little noisy. Okay, so my return pipe from my pump just drilled holes in it so it would aerate. And then I have a constant height in the fish tanks using a T and a uh, PVC cap down there with uh, holes in it. That's one and a quarter inch and then the return is one inch. Okay, and it stays at this height. I'm cycling it right now so I haven't added any fish to the system yet. And that's why the color of the water is uh, the color it is because of the chelated iron seaweed extract and uh, I've also added ammonia to start the, uh, uh, the nitrites and the nitrates to be informed. And I'll show you inside here. So this is my swirl pump. My swirl filter, I mean, I'm sorry. That seems to be doing really well. And then of course I've got a ball valve here so I can empty out the fish poo every so often. And then I've got the same exact setup on the other side. I won't show you the inside of that, it's the same. And so what I'm thinking is I'm going to put catfish in one and brim in the other because in North Florida, in the Panhandle, it is illegal to have tilapia. So brim and catfish are both fish that I like to eat and that are native and that are okay for me to raise. So we'll see which one does the best. Okay, now for the inside. I was limited on space, so I used the tops of two IBC totes on either side. And then I just bought a watering trough from Tractor Supply to fill in the space in the center. I also have a sump tank underneath these three that these three drain into. And then I've got the same thing on the opposite side. Uh, it's a flood and drain system using bell siphons. And I'll show you how I built the bell siphons in just a moment. But then coming from the swirl filter outside, it splits off into two grow beds on the side and the one in the center. Because it's smaller, I had to put a ball valve on it to slow down the, the water to it so it wouldn't cycle quite, quite as fast as the others. And while I'm here, I'll go ahead and show you my seedlings. There they are. I've got cantaloupe, spaghetti squash, aroma tomatoes, brussels sprouts, spinach, eggplant, loofah plants, regular tomatoes, cucumber, snap peas, broccoli, and zucchini. And so it won't be too much longer till I'll plant those. And here's a picture of the sump tank. And there's my uh, 550 gallon per hour submersible pond pump and that just pumps the water out of the sump tank back into the fish tank outside and then gravity feeds the swirl filter and then from there to the grow beds so the pump is only pumping into the fish tank and then there's the aerator that's inside to protect it from the weather. And then it goes in to the fish tank as well. 
So on this side, I've got three holes drilled, one for the intake from the soil filter, and then one uh, for the outgoing one inch pipe from the pond pump, and then the aerator trays. And let's see, we can hear one, the center is auto siphoning now. You can see that starting now. And then the other one is also <laughs> going at the same time. A lot of noise in here. This also helps with the aeration of the water in the sump tanks as well. Let me show you how the bell siphon works. So this is three inch uh, thin wall PVC. I'm going to cut slits in it to allow the water to rise up in it. And uh, that keeps most of the gravel out. Inside I have a one inch stand pipe with uh, a one and a quarter reducer. And this helps create a uh, little bit better flow of the water. You can see the water flowing over the pipe right now. It's ready to siphon. But I wanted to show you how the bell siphon was constructed. I just have these notches cut out so that it'll break the siphon effect. This is thin wall. Uh, and let's see, this is three inch, yeah. So this is four inch, this is three inch. And then in here we've got one inch and I'm sorry, one and a quarter inch. And on the bottom of it, I've got one inch that drains. So you'll see when I put this on here, it'll automatically siphon. And we'll watch right over here, it's draining. This is just that fast, it started auto siphoning. So that's how you build those. Uh, I have the fan turned off right now so I can shoot this video, but uh, I'm going to turn it back on because it's getting kind of warm in here. So thanks for watching. Um, if you have any questions, I guess you could message me and I'll answer to the best of my knowledge. And I'll do an update video once I have the plants growing and the fish in the system uh, to kind of show you what's going on with those. Alright, thanks for watching. Thanks, bye-bye.